Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to go through this photo book by Roger Deakins. If you don't know him, you should go Google him first. He's a very famous and popular cinematographer and this is his photo book that he came out with last year and I finally got a chance to get my own copy and so the fact that I created my own photo book now I appreciate the whole material of how books are created with and we'll just go through the whole thing so anyways uh, it's a hardcover book obviously if you didn't get that and the inside is black first and then title page and I always look at the font and the way of the spacing of letters and so we're not going to go through the whole intro However, Roger Deakins, he pretty much explains about his early childhood and his time growing up in Devon and when he used to, you know, be in school and his just days back then in, uh, before he was a cinematographer. And it's the one thing that first caught my attention is literally the first sentence which is I am not a still photographer and I won't pretend to be one at this stage in my career I have spent almost half a century enjoying my life as a cinematographer during which time I have photographed both documentaries and something like 70 feature films and Roger Deakins can obviously flex that he's done that many films and I think that it's just very humbling of him to just not even consider him as a still photographer despite him being a cinematographer in motion picture. So I think if you come in thinking that you're gonna go through photographs that are from movies that he's worked on then you're going to get disappointed in that respect but these photographs despite it not having that subject it's just, you just see the foundation of like how he saw things and even when he's not filming a, a movie. So these images were in early 1970s in North Devon and there's like little captions here and there but it's like when you look at the images itself they already look like stills from a movie, that's my opinion. And you just think to yourself like, what cameras did he use? And like, what film stock? Because back in the day, there was no digital cameras. And I'm just gonna go through a few of my favorite images in the book, but we'll go through quickly each and every page of this book, just in case you don't have a chance to get a copy of this book. But like I said, the photos are not from movies that he's worked on. These are literally just day in the life, people working in the farm. But like you see like how the low angle, there's just like so many different perspectives despite him being the same person who's photographing and there's just something very just like to me even though there's people and there's animals something just seems very serene and quiet in these images maybe it's just because of like the landscape and so it's just interesting because like for me I would imagine myself just like taking a photo of this road like straight on but the fact that there's just like this road and it leads somewhere and there's just movement and there's movement with the dog and the and these I don't even know if this is a cow but I'm just gonna guess it looks like it it's just and that you could tell that there's just like a way of perspective going this way and then it's just like how this background here is like not totally black. It seems like the sun is like just, you know, brightened up this corner here. Something when it comes down to printing images, when I worked in the dark room, 
I also think about how the edges, like, are they all filled and all these things. Like, I would think about my professors critiquing me on that. And just the choice of having like one image on each page compared to having like multiple images on one page, like what was his decision of choice in the sequence of putting this book together. I didn't really necessarily do uh, any research on maybe he has any explanations behind it, but this is just me and my thoughts and me what I think about when I look through a book. So I feel like also the fact that I grew up in the city all my life and it's just like rare occurrences that I would get to be at a farm and see this type of scenario. It's just interesting to see images of someone else and their experience. Cause like I said, I grew up in the city. I would never usually see this in my daily life. I would literally have to plan to go to the farm to witness this. So, like I said, it's just interesting how you would have like a photo like this where you're like taking a photo straight on of the subject and then here it's like a silhouette-ish of this man instead from behind it's like a uh, this is how he was at that point and this is where he is now away from the person who's taking the photo and then it's very desolate in these photos like even if there's certain objects it's still bare and just a lot of open space and then you go to this and then you see a ton of people inside this ranch or inside this barn and you just are curious like who are these people and why are they all here and so it's just interesting it's just like the the perspective of having all these men looking this way and angled this way and then compared to this photo where you just see the backs of these men it's just <laughs> I really wonder how he just would come about, you know, composing these shots. And it's not like you could tell all these dogs, like, stay there. I mean, you could, but it would be a hassle. But the fact that it just seems like a shot literally from a movie. And it's just interesting, just the fact that he was able to capture this. So... Oh, by the way, they're all black and white images. That should be obvious as I've already been skimming through the pages, but there's no color. I don't know the reason behind it, but maybe his preference is just at the time photographing in black and white. And the good thing about shooting or photographing in black and white is that you don't get distracted by color. You get you focus more on the subject of the photos. That's just how I've always seen it. You see more emotion, you just wonder more what's going on in the photo in regards to just why things are the way how they are. Because once you see color, you start like thinking much more about like the white and this black, like why are they like so, close or why are they in tune with each other or why are they opposite I don't know but like when it's black and white you're more like thinking about what is the feeling of the image like for example with these two people I'm trying to figure out why it feels like they're having such an intense conversation where in this person in the middle here it's like they're just wondering like it looks like they have a shocked face or expression and then the whole like triangle effect of how there's two people and this person it just frames the whole photo all together and then going back again with the perspective of what i'm saying instead of dead on straight in the middle you have this side angle 
and then like an image like this you're like oh i don't know why they're covering their face like that and like this i like love so much it's like you could have easily remove this part of the image or like photoshop it i don't know just so you'd have a clear sky of open space but no they he left it in and it's just an umbrella and then there's these two people and it's so subtle but like there's just something about the composition like his composition in his photos are like what really just captures my attention like he could have focused on this, but he chose to capture this man and then still have the action going on in the background. And there's a lot of action in the background, but then this man is like the main focus, but then there's also action going on within the windows. So, <sighs> I just love the expressions. It's just, it's just too good. Like, you know, what? going through these images and like how there's like a ton of people where like now I'm so used to like not that many people being around each other because just like social distancing and then I have no clue what is going on here but it's like it seems like fire and then there's like this man and like why is his expression like that but then there's like instruments so it just seems like a band of some sort and I love carnivals so especially if I get to capture and photograph the, the, the life of a carnival, it's just something eerie and mysterious and I'll never get tired of capturing a carnival. And then we're back to daylight settings. And like I said, it's not photos from like behind the scenes on movies he's worked on. These are just photographs that he just was able to capture when he has downtime or even when he is on a film set, if he has any like free leisure time to do anything, he will just go out and about and go for a walk and just photograph. And like, this is just so good. It's just like, I've been at the beach, but the fact that he could capture like different moments in one shot on the beach is just, just so nice. Like this would be a photo I would get. It would be like one guy. And then this is some like pet peeve of mine when I look at photos. And maybe that's because also I, I was a fine art major uh, in high school, but it's like this line it makes a huge difference when it's centered and straight. Not centered, but like when the horizon line is straight. Sometimes people take fo amazing photos and then the horizon line is like crooked. That messes me up. Like, see how it's like all straight. I feel like people don't pay attention to little details like that. And then again, it's just like a lot of open space, but then he has like just like the people or the subjects like in the photo and just like this little spot. Same as here, it's a lot of open space, but then there's like people still in the shot. And it's just like very calming, his photos. Like we were at the farm and then now we're at the pier of the beach. And it's just like him capturing just like certain moments and like how these are just a bunch of beach chairs folded up and then there's that this one person here. And you're just like, okay, like the things, again, when it comes to composition, I'm very curious. And just expressions and again so there's just a bunch of photos from different days and periods that are just like very slice of life we're already on like almost 70 pages in so this really reminds me of like very summertime you know when you just go to the shore and just uh, capture whatever you see. And this image, why it's important is because if you look at his podcast art work, Team Deacon's icon, it's literally actually this. I don't know if this is actual dog, but it's such a clever photo how he got to get the dog jump in a certain way like that. 
and then a bunch of donkeys. See, like this is like the first photo I probably saw now that's just like crooked or like sideways where it's like about to turn into a Dutch angle of some sort. And it's not really like properly positioned. This makes me want to go to the beach and like just capture photos now in black and white. Maybe I'll do that in the future. And so, also like as you could tell, like a lot of the images are like this size and then there's just all this blank space. And then compared to this, it's just like one large image. That also makes me curious. And it's just funny because this woman's like staring at that advertisement. It's like, what the heck is this? Like, what is going on? And then another just bunch of beach chairs again. And just all of these images here are just like very desolate. There's just like a lot of nothing, but then also feels like there's something. As I said, a lot of looks like nothing, but then there's like something. There's just like this eeriness going on and then calmness and peacefulness, especially the ray of sunlight just falling, casting onto the rocks here. And then now it just gets much more extreme with the people on the boat here. And they are wearing a lot of equipment and gear, so it seems like, and the waves are just like intense, so it just seems like they're on some craziness of who knows what. So these photos here, are shot at the Cape of Good Hope and Cape Horn. It was, let's see, uh, during when they docked at Rio de Janeiro, February 4th, which is my dad's birthday, uh, but 1978. And so th these are a whole nother set of images. Oh man, this one image here is one of my favorites in this book. It's just like, you know, it's one thing to get a, you know, a reflection image, but like the fact that he got one like this, like it's just so epic. It just kind of seems like a photo that he probably used as inspiration for like Blade Runner or something like that. And then, um, if you don't know, all these like, you know, pretty much X-Pan long strip images, just also a guilty pleasure to put them all on one page. And then going through, you could tell it's a whole different vibe compared to being in the UK. But now I think this one goes back to the UK because this is definitely not Brazil anymore. Uh, and we are skimming through this more. Back on the beach. I don't even notice this robotic person here. This one is one of my favorite images, is the one on the cover. It's just like the fact that like you're on a train and you saw someone's hands out the window like that, like just something about it. This reminds me of like in New York City, there are so many people who are always curious about like what construction is like being built. more random images this seems more like Americanized because you just see a lot of like cigarettes and crosses and like signs like this it just screams to me like Americana Western Midwest A lot of crosses and motels and railroads. A 
back to the very obsolete, not obsolete, desolate locations. It's filled with snow, glaciers, mountains, and then back to just a bunch of Hispanic people because you see the Spanish words on the walls. This is like pretty trippy. It's just like chairs and like just plants on a windowsill, but then like the blinds and the shadows, just like, like I said, angle again, just like, usually when you look at an image, you could tell like how tall the photographer is based on like how the photo was shot. But like with him, it's like, you cannot really determine like who it is, who's taking the photo. I feel like because he shoots at every other angle. Here's Big Ben in London, and then it's like Twin Towers. And then anyone who has photos of Twin Towers is like so lucky because they don't even exist anymore. And then back to you, very, like I said, a lot of stuff going on, but then it's just like very also empty. This one, love this photo. Just, you could tell, James Bond. Maybe this is like the one in a f only or in a few images that are from a film set that he got to work on. And then every other photographer has always a silhouette photo of them taking a photo of themselves. It looks like he's on the moon, to be honest, but we know he's not on the moon. And then just has an index of all the places where he photographed and the title of the images in case you wanted to go back and check where they were photographed. And then just the end credits. And that's pretty much it. And we have the end page here. And then, like I said, the James Bond photo is at the end. So thank you again for watching. Maybe I convinced you to go get a copy of your own of this photo book. And feel free to comment below on what are your thoughts about this book if you have any. Thank you again and stay tuned till the next video. It's the end of the video, so don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, it will help me in the long run. Okay, bye.